Here's a fun one, everybody. OSP, Ovin St. Proof, coming back against Alonzo Menafield. Talk about a fade versus fade situation. I have been suckered into betting on both of these men in the past, and I have lost a lot of money betting against both of these men. It's incredible. These are both guys that shit the bed when I think that they're going to show up on them, and they're also guys that show up when I try to fade them. So this is a very difficult spot. OSP is moving back down to 205. He got his ass beaten from my dad, Big Ben Rothwell, in that last fight, and he knows he belongs back at 205. So he's moving back down the scales. And what do we know about OSP? Low volume. Pretty athletic for being such a big guy. Sick ground game. And he gasses out. Those are the things you need to know about Ovin St. Pru. If he gets you on the mat and he gets on top of you, you're probably in trouble unless you've got some solid submission defense. If he can't get you on the ground, he's going to work his way to losing a split decision because he just doesn't throw that many strikes. Every once in a while, that high kick will flip out of nowhere and catch you in the head and hurt you like hell. But that's what he's got. Alonzo Minifield is a Fortis MMA prospect that I actually was relatively high on. He got shown the ropes by my boy Paul the Bear Jew Craig. Oh, no, never mind. Sorry. Mixing up my Fortis MMA prospects. He's the one that knocked out my boy Paul the Bear Jew Craig. And then came back and cost me badly against Devin Brown Bear Clark. This dude is a brick shit house. This much muscle is not allowed to be on one human being. He's a freak. And I mean that in the best possible way. He's got a body type that just shouldn't exist. And uh, he's a monster. He's just a sheer power striker. Now he's coming along. He's coming along. His striking is getting better. But he's knockout or bust. He's a finishing machine. Nine wins all by finish. He's got one submission, eight knockouts, and then his one time he's ever been to a decision. It was his lone loss against Devin Clark, who I thought's head was going to explode the second time Alonzo Menafield punched it because it swole up like this after the very first punch. This guy's got the death touch. He's got insane levels of power. And what do you want to know? Roll the dice, folks. Like, if this thing goes late, I would say it would be Ovin St. Pru, right? Because we know how bad Alonzo Menafield gasses. But Ovin St. Pru doesn't have that sellout wrestling offense that a guy like Devin Brown Bear Clark does. Now, if Ovin St. Pru puts Alonzo on his back, he's probably going to choke him out. He's probably going to Von Pru the dude and put him away because that's what OSP does. But. If he doesn't do that, well, Alonzo probably gets back up and slams some haymakers on him. And Ovin St. Pru is not a young man anymore. Ovin St. Pru is 37 years old. So far, his chin is held up. He's only been knocked out twice. So, I don't freaking know. I actually have no idea on this fight. This one could go either way. Either of these guys could finish. This also could be the sloppiest, disgustingest, most boring light heavyweight fight of all time when both of these guys gas out in the second round and OSP is trying to lay on Alonzo Menafield to get his way to the third just like Devin Clark did. I don't know. The way it's lined has me scratching my head as well. We've got Ovin St. Pru is a plus 110 underdog. He opened up minus 165 and it's been all Alonzo Menafield money. This is why I'm kind of scratching my head. Because I think Ovin St. Pru is probably the side here. Just looking at how green Alonzo Menafield is, like I said, I think if Ovin St. Pru gets this thing to the mat, it's probably over. But if he doesn't get to the mat, he's probably dead. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know that I want to stand in front of that kind of market move because it's a pretty big market move coming up against a guy who did not look good in his last fight. I mean, I guess neither of these guys look good in their last fight, so I guess Alonzo Menafield, still the hot prospect, one bag fight against a wrestler. Ovin St. Brew had a sloppy split decision loss against Big Ben Rothwell. Maybe that's why we're looking at it that way, but I don't know. This one's probably just a fap, a fireball, and popcorn fight for me. Probably just a pass. Hey, what's up, Gabe? Welcome to the show, buddy. Zoe's hard to hold down. You're absolutely right. He is. But the problem here is, you know as well as I do, man, OSP is huge. This guy is massive. And, and we've seen what he does on the mat with people. 
he's just the bigger man. So I know Alonso's hard to hold down, but he also doesn't know what he's doing down there. He could give up his back. He could give up his arm. That Von Prue choke or a rear naked choke, those are totally options here for a guy like OSP, especially when he's got the gas early in the fight. Michael Lunday, what's up, buddy? Maybe inside the distance. That's probably the way to look. Um, I don't think the totals are at, Oh, okay. So the early totals, it looks like the places that have them do have it set at one and a half. The under is even money. Under one and a half is plus 100. And that's maybe not a bad look. Because either Alonzo Minifield gets choked out or he gets knocked out. Or, I'm sorry, or uh, Alonzo Minifield gets choked out or he knocks out OSP. So maybe that under isn't a half bad option. I'd like to win money once on my life on an OSP fight. <laughs> See, James, and I'm, I'm on the other side where I'm the burned, jaded, old uh, old man over here that's like, fuck, I'm, I'm never betting on an OSP fight again. 